Brilliant. Okay. Well, although Julian's been bigging me up there, I think we also must give some uh, more more credit to to what they those guys have done in setting up this IMU. I mean the the actual administration involved in, in setting up something on this scale is just um, well it blows my mind more than more than I, what I'm going to show you today. Um, you may notice that I'm wearing my um, I'm out t-shirt from a few years back. Um, managed to dig that out today. It's a little bit tight, but it's okay. Um, so I'm going to get started. Um, first of all, what I'm going to show you is um, I'm just going to switch screens now, so I might not be able to see what you're actually chatting and typing about. But I'll just show you where I am um, in the UK. So I'm just going to share my uh, share my desktop with you now. One second. Okay, so you should be seeing uh, a map of the United Kingdom. I'm based in a, a village called Haworth, which is in Yorkshire. Um, so that's my accent, in case you are wondering. Um, it's not as far up um, as some people believe. Um, but there we are, nevertheless. So I'm in Yorkshire, so it's sort of in the north, but in the middle of the country, um, surrounded by green fields, and it's quite nice if anyone's ever been or you want to come. Um, we'll grab a coffee if you're out this way. Um, so yes, back to my uh, presentation. And I'm just reading the reading the conversation as well as I'm going along. Right, I'm going to switch uh, view now to my uh, presentation view, so then we can get started. And hopefully you're still all with me and you can all see what we're doing. Okay. So yeah, this presentation basically, it's um, it's a bit of a mashup of all sorts of different things. I wasn't too sure what I was going to talk about and, and how long certain things would take. Um, in the last session, I wasn't as interactive as I wanted to be. Um, so hopefully I might ask a few more questions this time and, and if time allows. Um, I have a tendency to talk and once I start talking, it's very difficult to, to shut me up. Um, so... A bit a brief introduction then as to who I am. Uh, my name is Lewis, um, and I'm the VLE manager for Leeds City College. Um, we adopted Moodle um, as a college in 2008, um, but I've been working with Moodle uh, longer since then. Um, I came from a smaller college, which merged into a bigger college, and then and then we merged again and became Leeds City College. So the the college is coming to its fourth year in using Moodle, but I've been using it a lot longer. I've worked on, on lots of Moodles, not just this one. Um, I've done lots of large-scale Moodle projects uh, for education and also private sector. Uh, I've helped out a lot of, sort of government, um, regional support groups and things like that. So I've got a good, a good knowledge in, in using Moodle across a whole, um, a whole platform, really, and a whole sector. So the presentation outline. Um, I'm going to go through this um, sort of in that order, hopefully, unless I go off on a tangent. Do pull me back on track if I do. I'm just going to tell you briefly about the College VLE. Um, then I'm going to touch on our upgrade path to Moodle 2. Um, not going to dwell on it too much because I know there are other presentations that have talked about Moodle 2. Um, and then briefly talk about the impact of change, how that's affected our teaching staff um, at Moodle, um, sorry, at College. Uh, and then a behind the scenes tour of Moodle, looking at all the hacks and the tweaks. And I think that's what, what people are most interested in. So I'll try and rush through the Moodle 2 bit and, and talk a bit more about the hacks and tweaks. Uh, then I'm going to show you a custom reporting tool that we've done and then finish off on the uh, My Moodle page and also then plans for the future and, and where we think we're going to take this. So about Moodle Leads then, um, we've got approximately over 5,000 active uh, courses and 25,000 active student user accounts and 1,000 active staff. Uh, and by active, we mean that they're using it this term. Um, I've got over 60,000 resources, uh, it's about 300 gig in uh, data size, and we get about 70,000 average visits per month. So it's a big site, it's massively used. Um, it's used as a blending, blended learning, it's used for distance learning. It's mostly further education, although we do have some higher education provision. Um, it's used massively for assignment submissions, um, and, and as well as courses such as e-business and IT, we do a lot of sports courses as well in public service in construction and engineering. So it's used across the whole board. So jumping on to the Moodle 2 upgrade journey then, I'll try and keep this brief, but the, the goal I had in mind when upgrading to Moodle 2 was to make it seamless. So the end user wasn't really aware we'd changed anything too radically. Um, and we achieved that by keeping the theme very similar to what we had before and making sure menus and all the things that you'd expect to see what they were used to seeing followed us across into Moodle 2 
and that was key to it. I mean, a lot of people are scared about upgrading because they think it's going to radically change what they do, and, and in fact it doesn't. It's still Moodle at the very core. Okay, so the procedure and the plan. Um, th there wasn't a massive um, upgrade plan and procedure in this project. Um, had I done this um, for a commercial client or somebody else, yes, there would have been a lot more planning. We'd have had we'd have had charts and 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 set up a base camp project to to really project manage it. But when you're in charge of the installation and you know the Moodle platform inside and out, and you're quite comfortable with upgrades and 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 delving into Moodle, then you don't need as much of a plan. Um, and basically, my plan was to take an offline copy of Moodle. Um, put it on a local machine and just run the upgrade and see what happens, see what errors were thrown up, see what lost functionality um, we're going to have, what blocks aren't going to work, what mods aren't going to work and obviously all my custom code, um, just see what happens with that really um, and then go from there and then test the install, get it working and then go back and do it again just to check that we've fixed what we need to fix. Um, at the time of the upgrade we didn't have any Moodle 2 versions of the book module or the certificate, face-to-face, -face, logbook or the lightbox gallery. Um, we knew they were coming, uh, most of them. Um, we thought we could roll our sleeves up and, and help um, port these over to Moodle 2, but we did have a lot of work on at that time, so it was just a matter of, well, we'll leave that to one side, and should they come out, and when they come out, we can always add them later. And we left all the database tables intact, so when, when they did come out, we wouldn't lose any of the content, which I think is quite important. We did have a few errors uh, during the installation. Um, we had courses in our meta table, meta courses that no longer existed. This threw up some errors. Um, it was relatively easy to fix. Uh, we just went through the database, found the, found the dead links, uh, and just removed the courses, and that fixed it. Um, other than that, though, the installation went really well. Um, we then performed an upgrade with the Moodle data folder. Um, I had lots of PHP timeouts because I did this from from the web, from a browser. I should have done it from command line, but I wanted to just jump straight in there and, and see how it went. Um, and I've just put at the bottom of this slide that failure is an option. Um, and I always had this in mind when I was upgrading to Moodle 2. It doesn't matter if it breaks. It doesn't matter if things fall over because this is only a backup. We still have our existing Moodle. That's still running in the background. I'm doing this in my own time. Nobody knows. You're not in the public, you're not in the public spotlight because you're doing this in your teams or on your own. Um, but then it was three weeks later when we uh, had to upgrade the actual live production environment and this is when the nerves kick in, this is when you start to panic a bit. Uh, and yes, we did get um, a few a few errors. We had a, a legal mix of um, collations in the database, calls from third party blocks, things I'd done in the past and things just a mismatch really. We had UTF-8 um, tables, we had UTF general, we had Latin, we had all sorts of strange things going on. I had to just go through each table and just, just set it back to uh, UTF-8. Um, and then we had another error called unknown column item field list, uh, field in field list. And I have no idea what that is. Even today I still don't know what that um, that is. Um, to fix it we roll back to an older version of Moodle 2 and then once that installed we then put a newer version on and that fixed it. But I think that's gone now and I think because we were early adopters to Moodle 2, um, that's probably why we had a few errors, but things have improved massively since then. Um, so, errors post upgrade. Um, we couldn't change themes. Um, again, might have been the version of Moodle we were running. This has since been fixed. And then we got the uh, the infamous bug where all any um, repository links, files, Word documents, things uh, were missing until you went in to edit them, put a full stop in the description field, then hit save. Then you come back and the resources were there. Um, that was a nightmare, that was very scary times. Uh, luckily, again, another upgrade seemed to fix that and put everything right, so we were lucky. Um, I did expect things to fall over, and I enjoy fixing things. It's a bit strange, it's a bit weird, um, but that's how we learn, and that's how we get better at using Moodle. If things are always just ticked along nicely, then um, we wouldn't get to where we are, and we wouldn't understand how to fix problems when they arise. So it's good that things go wrong and it's good we're able to fix them and, and put that back in the community and use the bug tracker and, and just help out really. Um, so just a quick question then, I just wanted to, to use um, a poll, if you can do this, I'm not sure if you can do this on your iPad, um, but if you just want to answer that question uh, whilst I just quickly look at some of the, uh, the chats. Yeah, uh, Julian just saying it was a, a Moodle 2 bug, and uh, it definitely was. Um, 
but it has been fixed. Uh, Moodle 2 has matured so much in such a short amount of time. Um, it's quite amazing, really. Um, we were a bit early and a bit eager to jump in and just do it, but I always am. If, if there's a beta out or, or something like that, I like to just, just get it and play with it. And yeah, let's put up with the bugs. Um, but so what? It's fun. It's fun to, to stay new and to keep on top. Okay, so just a quick look then uh, back at the poll. Um, most people have already adopted Moodle 2, which is good. Um, and now I've just got one more question just to ask you as well. If you could answer this one as well. Did you start afresh or did you upgrade? Um, just interesting just to get a feel for the room, just to see what those people have done. Um, interestingly, at the moment, I'm broadcasting results, so you should be able to see that. It seems quite level, really. A fresh Moodle install or upgrade? Well, for me personally, I didn't have the option to do a fresh install. The, the Moodle site was too big. There were too many courses, too much data to migrate. So although a fresh install would have been nice and I would have loved that, but in the real world, I had to go for the upgrade. Um, and I only had a week to take the site down, get everything upgraded and bring it back online. So it was all or nothing. Okay, well, thanks for uh, participating in those polls. I'll just move those, um, hide those now. So the staff impact, uh, it did have an impact on training. Uh, we had to change out a lot of our handouts, a lot of our videos and screencasts we had to change as well. Um, and the Moodle training courses we had to adjust. Um, but it was a good time for us to bring out a training program. Um, and Mary touched upon this in, a, in the keynote just, at, just before I've come on. Um, and it's a document that you can have, you can use. It's on this Moodle course. Feel free to email it, tweet it, and, and wherever you need. Uh, it's basically a a Moodle training overview, it's how we approach Moodle 2 training now from the beginning right through to the end. Um, I'm just going to share the actual PDF. Um, bear with me one second. Share this document, I thought I already had this uh, queued up. Okay, I'll just move this up so you can see. And then I'll just zoom in. Now, hopefully, you can uh, you can see these three tables on the screen. Um, starting with uh, the beginners, uh, we've got five modules in each section, and you have to complete each one before you move on to the next one. So it's quite progressive. Um, Moodle module one is an introduction to Moodle. What is Moodle? How it works, and the benefits of using Moodle. Moodle two, we, module two, we're talking about Moodle courses. What is a course? How do we set a course up? Um, how how enrollments work? How you put students on it? And we cover these two before we get on to the basic resources. Staff need to understand what it is they're doing and why they're doing it before they start putting resources on the course. So we create basic resources. This is how to add files and folders, how to have web pages and labels, all the basic um, features of Moodle um, that staff need to do early on on the Moodle journey. Module 4 is dedicated to the WYSIWYG editor and the file manager. Uh, it's a 30 minute session we deliver and we look at embedding media and just basically how to use that WYSIWYG editor and also how to upload files and, and change things around in the file manager, which of course has changed in Moodle 2. So it's worthy to spend a bit of time on this. Uh, module 5 is just Moodle support. It's, it's the support my team offer um, the staff at, at Leeds College, basically what you can get from us, content development and Moodle training. So then once your staff have completed the beginner section, we move on to the intermediate. Um, and module six is doing intermediate resources. So it's how to add NLN materials to create books within courses and also using the sub course module, which we've adopted, which I'll talk about in this session. Module seven is inter intermediate activities, how to add choices, forums, and feedbacks. This is all the interactive stuff. It's the add an activity on Moodle. And it's, it's, it's the bit that I like. It's the bit we get excited about. The PowerPoints and Word documents are all boring to me. It's, this is the, the bit that we want to get, get staff using more of. Module eight is purely based on um, assignments. So it's looking at giving feedback and grades. It seems to be all about feedback these days. Um, and so how do we give feedback to students? How do we grade assignments um, and send response files and things like that? And also how we back up assignments and also export grades as a Excel spreadsheet so we can do a lot more things with them. Module nine is looking at groups and groupings because that is a difficult beast to get your head around. Uh, first of all, it seems a little bit easier in Moodle too, but still the whole concept of creating groups and then having to put groups with inside groupings just, com just complicates things slightly. Um, I don't know if we could do it just on groups. It, I'm not sure how, how we'd do that, but we'd, we'd dedicate a whole section to it because it does confuse a lot of staff. Uh, module 10 is housekeeping. 
backing up courses, getting ready for a new term, and using the course reset button. If you haven't used the course reset um, option in the um, in the settings of your course, use it. It's fantastic. Back up the course first, um, but just click on it and see the options that you've got. I mean, it just gets your course ready for a new term. Module 11, they're moving on to advanced. So if your staff have done beginner intermediate, they're really getting on with their Moodle journey now. And when they're at their advanced stage, they have the skills basically to teach others and to bring other staff up to speed as well. So this is where we look at advanced activities, such as the database, the lessons, the wikis, the workshops, uh, and SCORM objects. We then look at the gradebook in, in more depth, and this is for your advanced, your hardcore Moodlers. Um, and this is looking at exporting grades, grade categories, hiding grades, publishing grades, grade calculations, weightings, and totals. I mean, the gradebook itself is just such a huge mammoth chunk of Moodle that, that people don't realize how big this actually is and, and, and how much it actually does. And it's a fantastic, fantastic tool in Moodle, and it's, it's one of its greatest strengths, yet for me personally, it's underused. Module 13 are the reports. So we teach staff how to get reports, how to manipulate the data, and also how the Moodle team can generate specific reports tailored to their needs. We can do SQL queries if, if needs be. We can generate uh, custom reports for, for faculties and departments. Module 14 is looking at course layouts, how to design courses, and, and looking at it more from a, a designer, web designer point of view. Um, I'm, I'm from a coding background, but also a design background. So to me, the sort of design and layout and aesthetics of a course is really important. Um, so how to re re replace content with multimedia, how to hide things and use images to link off things instead, and just make things look pretty and engaging for students. Because um, for me, that's the key to, to keep people engaged with a course if it looks nice. Um, and we try and look at, we differ from the conventional Moodle approach. I mean, the um, Julian's, um, one of the course layouts, the, the grid layout, is just a fantastic way of, um, of doing things slightly differently on your course. And then module 15, uh, looking how to create and run virtual classrooms with uh, Adobe Connect, which is what we're using today. So we've dedicated an entire section on that because we have the Moodle integration as well. Okay, so that document's there if you want it. Um, it's on this Moodle course on iMoot, uh, and you can do what you will with it. Okay, so it's a, an overview now of the uh, of the college website. I'm going to play a video. Uh, this is our induction video. Um, it, it, it jutters a bit for me. Uh, I don't know if it's my bandwidth here um, from home or what, but I'm going to play it anyway. Um, hopefully, it'll run smooth for you. If not, you might get it in little chunks. But hopefully, you'll you'll get the gist. Uh, and whilst it's playing, it'll give me time to have a drink, um, and it only lasts for about a minute and a half. So hopefully, you should all see it and hear it. Place where I can view my course materials, my assignments, and helps me learn online. It's fully customizable, you can change the colour depending on your mood. I quite like pink. I like pink. I like red. If you're on a computer on campus, just load up Moodle and log in with your username and password. No mess. No fuss. It's well good that Moodle is on the internet because I can access it at home. You can look it on any web browser. I can use it on my PS3 and iPhone as well. It's real simple, you just go to moodle.leedcitycollege.ac.uk. The menu system at the top of the page is pretty cool. For me, I can access anywhere on Moodle. It's well quick, everything I need is from the My Moodle page. A list of my courses is shown on the My Moodle page. And if your course list gets too long, you can now create Moodle folders. My course page is well simple. I can see on a calendar when my assignments are due. Any other resources and videos are quite clearly shown. And Word documents and PowerPoints are clearly shown. Moodle rocks, log on today.
Okay, you should hear me. I haven't I haven't gone anywhere. Um, mine just jutters a little bit, um, and so it's not quite as as fast as everybody else. So just in case anybody else was experiencing that, I just went to play it a little bit longer. Um, so I'm back. I've pumped the water. Yes, it's from Yorkshire, but we we do have taps and things here. It's not it's not as bad as you're led to believe on the television. Um, right then, so I'm going to give you a tour now of, of Moodle, but that video is just, that's how we get students fired up straight away. That's how we get them to, you know, to, to big up the excitement round and say, look, Moodle isn't what you'd expect it to be. It is quite funky. It is quite different. Um, uh, and so I'm going to quickly take you through the, the, the top 10 hacks, um, and then I'm going to demo each one, uh, then hopefully we'll have questions and things at the end. Um, since Moodle 2, I don't have to hack as much, which is nice. Um, because it does so much more than 1.9 ever did, and uh, I'm a huge Moodle 2 fan, it was the best thing we ever did, uh, but there are still some hacks that are essential to my daily daily use as an administrator and a developer and a teacher and, and all my many hats um, and roles uh, within the college. Um, so looking at the, ten, the top 10 hacks, and I'm going to quickly just power through these slides and then I'm going to go into detail on each one. Um, so the theme itself is, is hack number 10. Um, at hack number nine, we have a, an Ajax user search, just speeds up um, searching for users on the course. At hack eight, it's like top of the pops, this, if anyone uh, knows what I'm talking about. At, at number eight, we have the Moodle course search. Uh, at number seven, we have the quick course edit block. At number six, we've got center blocks in a theme, uh, and that's quite essential. Uh, hack five. Um, I'm going to stop here and just talk about hack five. Um, if you haven't used Twitter feed, do uh, and make a note on this. If you're taking notes, this is this is what you really important um, for for teaching staff. But basically, we use Twitter feed to engage with students where the tutors don't use Twitter. So on Moodle, we create a forum which we then get the RSS feed for. We then put the RSS feed into Twitter feed, so it auto tweets out on behalf of the tutor. So when students, uh, when tutors say, "Oh, they don't have time to tweet," and I'm not getting into this Twitter thing, what are hashtags and all and all the Twitterisms, um, they don't need to. If they continue using Moodle as they normally would, um, and little do they know, then behind the scenes, it's automatically sending out tweets to their students uh, from a forum, and it's brilliant. Um, students can then follow tutors. And the tutors are tweeting all the time and they don't know. So any assignment information and things like that, bang it in a forum. It goes out to Twitter feed, it goes out to Twitter. They then pick it up on their mobile phone, on their iPad, uh, or whatever client that they're using. So if you're not using uh, Twitter feed, you need to, um, because it's amazingly awesome. So hopefully you've taken a note of that. Uh, and now I'm going to move on back to my Top of the Pops countdown. So... At hack four, um, we've got a gradebooks, uh, a gradebook hack tweak. Um, if you use a fixed width column on Moodle, you'll notice you get scroll bars, um, horizontal scroll bars um, on content that uh, hangs outside of your Moodle theme, and, and that's called an overflow. Um, and that's intentional for Moodle, um, but it drives some of our staff mad. They don't like um, they don't like having to scroll within a scroller. Um, so we've just shifted some columns around just to make things easier, and hopefully I'll show you that as well. Hack three, not my hack. Um, it belongs to Sam Marshall from the OU. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm going to show you a brief, really brief demo of it. It's still in beta, but that doesn't stop me. Um, I love it. It's amazing. We've done some tweaks to it, slight tweaks to it, mostly in the design and the CSS. But what a tool that is. Um, hack two is our Moodle reporting engine. Um, it's called More because I need an acronym because everything has an acronym and. and I don't use them, so this is my first acronym. So it's Moodle Online Reporting Engine. Um, and yeah, the name did come afterwards. Um, here's a quick screenshot of it, but hopefully I'm going to demo it. Um, and there's some of the reports that it generates. Um, and then at Hack 1 is the My Moodle page. Um, and this has caused a bit of a, you know, a thing on Twitter at the moment where people talk about it. And uh, so I'm looking to really pull my finger out and develop this a lot more really um, and try to give back what we can uh, to the community. This is a hardcore hack unfortunately, not in block format like my other ones. This is actual hacking around with the source and moving things around. So watch this space on that one. Um, so I'm going to show you the site now. So I'm just going to open up a new share on my computer. Uh, hopefully you should be able to see this. Uh, I won't be able to engage with the, the chats and the questions whilst I'm doing this um, because I'm going to have it on full screen. Um, so you're just going to have to bear with me when I'm powering through it. And then uh, we'll talk about it. Um, just been asked about Moodle Bar. Uh, we've 
we've kind of shelved Moodle Bar. Um, we've got a form of a Moodle Bar, but I've seen someone's developed something called Awesome Bar. Um, and Awesome Bar looks fantastic. Um, it's worth checking out. Uh, the bar that I've got on here um, is just part of the theme. Um, well, you can have a look. I'll show you in a second. Okay, so I can actually see what you're all doing now because I've got um, Firefox open on my screen, but hopefully you're all you're all seeing this. Um, so this is the Leeds City College Moodle, um, and Mary very kindly showed a screenshot of it before um, in her presentation. Um, we hope it's a very nice theme. We tried to make it not look as moodly, uh, tried to make it look more like a website, really, make it more functional um, and easier to navigate. Um, at the top, we've got our new version of a Moodle bar. Um, which it's not fixed, it does it does disappear when you scroll down, but that's intentional. Um, and then we've got a quick stats um, link there, which I'll show you, an online users link and a, and a quick link to log in. Uh, so on the front page, we've divided it down into sections. We've tried to use big, chunky, clear icons just again to engage students and give them a flavor for, for what their Moodle journey and experience is going to be like. Um, site news, we've used forms for site news on the front page and bringing some tweets here as well. Uh, if they've lost the password, they can click on there. So we just try and make it as easy as we can. Um, we've got a menu system here, which isn't the, the core menu system in Moodle 2 that you get on Moodle 2 themes. It's a bespoke menu. It's a, a JavaScript menu. Um, but there's lots of tweets and hacks in there. So you get different options depending on who you are. So if you're a site administrator, you get an extra drop down um, with lots of quick shortcuts to various admin sections on Moodle. So from wherever you are in Moodle, you can always jump to where you need to be rather than finding the location in the block. Um, and we've got lots of different roles at, at the college. Um, and this menu adapts depending on what role or what group or cohort you're in. So it's quite clever. Um, and it's used massively. Um, we, we actually track the, the, the clicks for various things using uh, Google Analytics. So it allows us to, uh, to just see which, which menus people are using and what people have clicked on. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log into, uh, log into Moodle. Uh, we use LDAP uh, logins. Oops, that's not good. Let me just try that again in case it's got my old password. This is where the LDAP server lets me down. No, no, we're in. Brilliant. Okay, so try not to look too much at the uh, at the My Moodle page. Uh, I'll just go to a different page just so you don't all race ahead of my presentation. Um, okay, so you can see um, a new menu has appeared here. Uh, this is my secret admin menu. Um, only four of us share this secret, so uh, it's our own secret menu. Um, it gives us the power. Um, it just allows me to jump around and do different things in Moodle, um, which is quite quite useful for me because I need to respond to, to requests really quickly. Um, we have a little stats button up here, so you can click live stats. I'm always being asked for stats um, in, in this role because it's such a big Moodle install. Um, I'm always asked for, for stats on various things. So I created live stats. Just tells us since term started in September how many logins we've had, how many new resources have added. So we've had 29, nearly 30,000 new resources since September. Uh, forum posts is is relatively small, which is something we need to pick up on. Assignment submissions though is, is quite huge, 56,000. And a lot of the students like the, the Moodle messaging. Uh, so just some live stats. It's just nice just to see a snapshot of where you are. Um, the online users page, when I click on this, will show me um, who's online. Um, I see more information because I'm an admin, so I can see if they've got a manual account or an LDAP account. I can see their student number, and I've got some admin buttons here to perform various functions. Um, so it's quite useful. You notice it says that I'm not online. Uh, that's intentional because I used to be online all the time, and people would message me at crazy hours when I was trying to do things, thinking I was working. So I've, I've had to hide myself from that page. Um, and then just here on the Moodle bar, we've just got a little drop down, um, shows you your picture. If you click that, it edits your profile and you can log out and it just shows you your email address and things like that. So just a nice little feature of uh, our new Moodle bar, if you like. Um, OK, so going back to the hacks themselves, we've got um, going looking at search users. So this is number nine. So number 10 was the theme itself and this is number nine. So this is user search. It's a real time Ajax search. So I can start typing in that box, and then underneath, in real time, it brings up the name of the student or the staff member that I'm searching for. So I get their picture, their name, the user ID, email address, the authentication type, and then I've got some admin icons here. I can view my profile. I can view the logs for that user. I can log in as that user, so quickly I can simulate a login for that particular student, 
or I can delete the user. And for us, that's quite quite crucial. It's just a nice fast way of jumping to a, a student. If someone phones up for a password request or something like that, we can find them straight away again. Just get it from my admin menu. Um, same with uh, search courses. So search courses we've got at number eight in in the top ten countdown. So if I search courses and type chemistry, for example, you can see it brings up uh, various chemistry courses. I get the course name. I can see if it's hidden or visible. I get the course code here, which is used for enrollments, and then I've got various options again: course info page. I can view the category, so I can, if I'm creating another chemistry course in that category, rather than going through forward slash courses, I can jump straight in there and it take me to that that course category, which is useful. Uh, this icon means I can go straight to the enrollments for that course. So instead of having to go in the course, then find the roles and drop down, it takes me straight in there. I can edit the course by clicking on there, or I can delete the course if I was to be so bold. Um, so real-time AJAX searching is definitely a, a feature that that we use a lot of um, in Moodle. Um, because it's, it's core to daily administrative tasks. So I'm going to go into uh, a course now, and I'm going to show you hack number seven, which is the um, quick course edit bar. So this is just a standard uh, Moodle course. Um, and you can see that I've got the, the settings block on the left. But the quick course edit bar only appears when you turn editing on. So you, you click turn editing on, and then the block then becomes visible. Uh, this allows me to do a host of different things, and I can hack this and put more things in and, and, and make it as complicated or as simple as we like. Um, first up, I can hide a course. Uh, this is associated with the My Moodle page, but I can make courses hidden and visible. I can jump into the cat course category. I can find the reports quickly, so I don't have to add the other block where reports are now hidden. Um, I can bring up meta information, child course information. I can change the ID number of this course. I can cha change the, the course format and the number of weeks and topics as well. And then I hit save changes, um, and then those changes are done instantly. Um, it's just a useful, quick, quick thing. And this is this is a proper block, so I can release this block. Um, it should install on all Moodles. Um, I'll just quickly do some checks and tests on it before we, we go any further with it, just to check that there's no uh, rogue code, and I might put a few comments in it because I'm guilty of not doing that. Um, so that's basically um, hack number seven. Um, and then I'm going to look at hack number six, which is uh, center blocks. Um, and to do center blocks, I'm going to actually show you another block that I've got uh, called course header block. Um, and what the course header block does is it creates a nice visual header um, at the top of your course. So if I click uh, move, and then you can see hopefully at the top of the screen you get this bounding box here, which means I can put blocks in the center. I can put them in the left and the right column, but I can put them in the center. I've also got one um, at the very bottom of the course, if you can see that there. So I can put blocks underneath. It's really nice because you can put calendars and things in there and they stretch the full width of the screen and it just makes it look less moodly. Uh, so I'm going to drop that, that block into there so you can see what that does. And turn editing off so it looks nice and clean. You can see that then, it's, I've given it a header. So basically the title of the course, the full course name appears in there. So if the staff change the course name, uh, that will change in real time on there because it, it just pulls that query from the database. This background is controlled via CSS in the theme, but the plan is to expand this block and to allow staff to put their own images in. I really like them to upload their own picture um, that displays as a background image. It's just finding the time just to uh, just to crack on with that, really. Um, so hack five was um, Twitter feed, uh, which I've talked about, which I'm not going to show you because I need to log into Twitter feed and things, but it's, it's relatively straightforward to do. Hack four is a, a change to the grey book. Um, so I'm just going to use my, my quick course just to uh, just to pull up my sample training course. Um, just a course that I use as a sandbox, really, um, just when I'm doing things like this or training stuff. Um, so one of the things we've done here is when you go into to grade an assignment uh, on Moodle and then you view the actual attempts, um, you see you get this scroll bar here, and this is to do with the overflow. Um, a lot of staff didn't don't like this this bar. In order to grade um, a student, you have to then scroll across to find the status column with grade. But then, of course, you lose where you are on this side here, and it's difficult. And on, when you've got lots of students in this in the course and they're scrolling down, it's very difficult to lose your place. So one of the requests from staff was, "Can you shift that grade uh, column?" So I did. Um, to make room for it, I dropped the user profile picture column because it wasn't needed um, for us. It's not too important. So we put the grade column in here. So now you can just click grade and it'll take you to the grade page. It's just one of those little, it's a hard hard hack. Um, it's actually done in the actual code. Um, so if you know what you're doing, it's good. And if you don't, don't go down that route um, if you can. 
but it's just little tweaks like that that just help to, to improve the, the user interface and that's how we do things a bit differently. We'll go back to this course now and show you hack number three which is Sam Marshall's um, subpage module. This is an example of the subpage module. Um, basically when you click on the link it takes you into what you think is another Moodle course but it's actually not, it's the same ID and then in there you can turn editing on and you can add all your resources and activities just as you would in a, in a standard uh, Moodle way um, and it's fantastic, it stops the infamous scroll of death that, that, we seem to, um, that we seem to obsess about a little bit in Moodle um, and it does a good job of breaking, breaking things down. Um, we've hacked it a little bit in terms of the actual visual style normally when you install the sub um, the sub page module you get a standard resource link like in Moodle so all we did was just find the, the CSS add a few classes of our own um, and then just put them in a bounding box here made it more visual made it look more like um, a sub course it's how we used to do things before with meta courses we used to um, create a meta course copy the URL link and then draw these things up in, in Photoshop or I'll use a bit of CSS um, and now we don't need to, it's all automated so you know a big thumbs up to Sam Marshall at the Open University for developing that, it, it's a real game changer in terms of user interface design and making things work differently in Moodle. Uh, it is in beta um, but like I said, I said before I, I, I don't mind, I like things in beta, I like, I like to fix and play and, and crack on with things. So hopefully I'm not talking too fast, um, I'm just trying to rattle through it so we can have some questions at, at the end. Um, so what I'm going to show you now is hack number two which is the Moodle Online reporting engine. Hopefully you're all still with me and you can still all see this. Um, this is the Moodle Online reporting engine. Um, basically I got asked for reports about faculty reports and departmental reports and because the college is so such a huge organization now we've got so many courses and 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 stakeholders and things. I'm, I'm forever writing reports so I, was, I started making this thing within Moodle and it, it became too complicated to, for me to, to comprehend um, and I need to link this up to our student MIS record system which is another database and there were all these complicated joins and things going off and I thought you know what I'm just going to build this thing just outside of Moodle because I'm just going to put Moodle to one side, fire up uh, Notepad and, and just start punching away at some, some queries and things and, and this is what's come out of it. Um, for now, I mean, I need to add a lot more, lot more to this. Um, at the moment, it's only running on MySQL because it was just a quick and dirty um, way of getting some data. So I click on Report Builder, um, and then I'm able to choose the faculty. So it's all driven down. This is from our MIS system, uh, but I can choose Sports as an example, and then I can choose a date range to search from. So I could go back to say January, the start of the year, uh, go for New Year's Day, and the we'll go up to yesterday. Um, I can then choose to include resources in my report and activities. I can get a child course breakdown of the meta courses that are linked to all the courses within sports. I can get a course breakdown too and enroll student information, even assignment data. Um, so if I want a simple report, I don't tick as many options and if I want a full-blown detail report, the more I tick, the more I'm going to get. And then I click build report. It does wear away a little bit um, because it's contacting an, another database and another database and it's running all these really ugly um, SQL queries doing all sorts of, of madness um, and then when it does actually spit the report back at you it's quite in-depth and detailed as to what's going on. Um, it's all about reporting these days uh, particularly in further education um, it seems to be that um, stats and statistics are sometimes often more important than what's going on on the course but when you've got so many stakeholders involved you've got to, uh, to appease both sides really so the report shows you how many uh, books are added in that date range, how many labels are added in that date range, NLN materials, URLs and things like that. And then on the right hand side you see here um, we've got the total count so we can see how many books are in those courses, uh, how many labels are used um, and things like that. And then if we look at activities we can see how many assignments have been added, what the total assignment count is, how many chats, choice and feedback. So we get to gauge how interactive a, a faculty is. So rather than looking at course level, we're looking at these as a group now. So we can say, okay, sports is, is very interactive, but maybe childcare is more repository based. So we'll see if we can shift that balance, use Moodle training to, to encourage staff to do things a bit differently. We can see the enrolled students in these areas and how many students have visited the course between the date ranges we set. Uh, and same with assignments, look at how many assignments have been submitted and how many of those have actually been graded as well because it's one thing to submit the assignments but are the tutors marking them and giving the feedback. 
and then we look at the course breakdown so this shows me all the meta course and child courses the student visits um, for those students enrolled on these sports courses and the resources and activities then in, in each one and some little rollovers just to just so we can see so when we're further down the list you don't have to remember which uh, table you're looking at so that's the Moodle reporting engine uh, and now we're going to move on to hack number one which is the uh, the my Moodle page itself um, quick check on time yeah I'm doing okay um, so the my Moodle page this is the my Moodle page um, we, it's basically it's the landing page for all everybody when they go into Moodle when they log in. We force it to take them to the My Moodle page because for me, it's the most underused and, and one of the best pages in Moodle. Um, even without the hacks that we've done, enable it and use it and play with it because it's fantastic. It allows customization. You can add blocks. The students can add blocks, and they can really make it their own. Um, so many colleges that I've seen and, and schools um, rely on the students actually searching for their course or or clicking and wading through course categories to get the way they want and the My Moodle page does that for you. It looks at what courses you're enrolled on and it gives you a list of the courses and, and, and that's what you want. It's it, it's it's taking down those barriers, those number of clicks and it's the first you log in and this is what you see and you're on your course. Um, so the My Moodle page and we have a big header at the top here and this is on a rotation so a bit like Google when we're celebrating special days or the Queen's Jubilee coming up and things like that. We'll 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 do a different header um, to celebrate a certain day. And one of our content developers, um, a, a guy that I work with, um, he he draws these up for us. Um, we look ahead in the calendar and we see what's coming up, um, and then we draw uh, my Moodle headers. We get students to design them as well. Uh, we do Moodle competitions. Uh, the winning the winning banner stays on Moodle for a week, and they'll win a digital camera or whatever prize we've got um, lurking around in the cupboard. Um, no, no, we do actually buy them something something nice. Um, I put some messages here as well, important messages we want students to see uh, or even staff to see. And again, it's quite complex. We've got um, different uh, a view for staff as we've got for students so we can display different messages. So this is my Moodle list here. Um, so it's my list of courses I'm enrolled on moving down. But I've also got featured courses here. So courses that I really want to, to draw attention to, put them in here. And again, that's different for staff and for students. Um, students see a different set of courses and what staff see so my Moodle training support for staff is in there in-house resources and, and safeguarding for staff and for students they'll have the student safeguarding course and so on and so forth um, so uh, my Moodle pages have attempted to get quite long particularly when our staff members enrolled on lots and lots of courses so we needed a way to actually um, to streamline this um, and so we devised Moodle folders um, it works very much like um, Google Docs used to use labels um, before you could put things in folders you had to tag something and then that's almost what we're doing here um, so what I can do here is I can click the add a folder tab and I can give the folder a name so we'll call this one my funky Moodle courses and we'll choose an icon uh, let's go for this one something different then we hit save and then it refreshes it takes you back to your my Moodle page you can see a folder there now called my funky Moodle courses with a zero it means there's no courses in there to put a course in there we click move next to a course and we have this drop down and we can choose what folder it wants to go in um, it's not drag and drop it's not Ajaxy um, simply again just a lack of time stopped us from developing it further um, staff are you know oh this is brilliant but can it do this isn't this you can never seem to please them uh, you can't please Moodle tutors don't tweet that um, so when you when you toggle them between that folder you can see that that course is in there and if I move another um, another course in there the count should in increment up to two to show there's two courses in there um, and then basically I can personalize my learning experience so I can really sit create lots of folders move courses around change the icons and basically make things look a little bit more funky and it's a little bit different um, and it's good I've seen some really creative uses of this um, I've seen staff put things into folders such as my Wednesday afternoon classes or my evening classes or my distance learning classes so you can really keep keep track of it um, it's nice we can also edit folders um, I can go in I can rename those folders and I can also delete them but you can't delete them if there's a course inside it so to remove a course um, we just go in and we just say uh, remove from folder which will then say that there's no course in sports and then we can then delete that sports folder by clicking on there so at the moment this is a hard hack in the my Moodle page but because now we've got center blocks in Moodle I really need to look towards making this into a, into a proper block so you could actually 
plop it into a Moodle site, drop it straight in there um, as a center block, and that's where I need to go with this as a project. And I'm been nagged now to to really do something um, with it. So that's the plan moving forward. Um, so yeah, that's the my Moodle page basically. Um, it's going to we're going to build upon it, and that's what I'm going to show you my my next slide now moving moving forward into the future and some radical ideas that we've got um, for Moodle uh, buzzing around in my head at the moment, things that I need to do and things I need to get out there and at the moment it'll just be a matter of jumping in, um, just jumping in at the code and, and just hacking and ripping and, and, and seeing what works and looking at other sites and seeing how they do things and, and chucking things in the mix and looking at Java technologies and jQueries and all this sort of stuff and say how can we use all this fantastic stuff um, now really, how can we throw it in now and use it rather than you know, analysing it too much and, and overthinking it. Let's just jump straight in there and, and have a go. Um, so I'm going to go back to my uh, presentation now. Um, wherever that's gone. One second. Uh, there it is. Okay. Um, so that's the My Moodle page. Um, I'm just going to then make this a little bit larger, but I want to just keep the, the chat open as well. Uh, so this is the, the improved uh, user interface that I've got. It's an idea moving forward. So the theme I've just shown you, the, the nice colourful web design theme, I, although I like it, I kind of think it's still reminiscent of a, of a website and perhaps Moodle now needs to move more to an application and feel more like um, something you'd fire up on your iPad or something like that rather than, oh, this is a, an HTML a website. So this is the idea that we've got um, and basically it's keeping the My Moodle page as a central core to all things that we do. So within Moodle, your My Moodle page itself is actually docked to the left hand side. Um, so no matter where you are in, in Moodle, um, you've always got access to what's going on and the information that you need and then your course things appear on the right. Um, so then we, we did a, a conceptual mock-up of this just to see what it'd look like in a, in a course environment. Um, and, and basically, we're looking at here with with these icons. I'm just going to draw on the screen, so hopefully you can uh, you can see this. Um, let's pick a color. Let's pick red. Um, so up here we have what I call the notifications um, panel. Uh, and so any messages that that you receive should appear in here. Any um, friend requests, etc., will appear. And you get a count, a bit similar to iOS, where you get a count of an, an email count or how many updates are needed for your system. Then that should always be be prominent really to, to the user. Then we're looking at the My Courses, so then a drop down here to show the courses you're enrolled on. Uh, but then the bit I'm interested in more than anything is looking at an activity stream really. So when I log on, what's what's changed in Moodle? Not on that course, but on all my courses. Who's added what? Who's done what? And what's going on? Um, so that's quite core to, to where I'm going. Um, and then we're looking to add new content. Again, this bit down here. To add content at the moment on a course, we have to go into the course, turn editing on, do a drop down and, and there's like 10 clicks involved just to get there well can we not just do it in a single click and use some Ajax calls to make things a little bit nicer um, again we're looking at center box but this time we're looking at three so we look at one there one there and one there so we could have three blocks in the center and then the course content actually starts here it's just doing things a little bit different I would imagine it look quite cool on, a, on an iPad or a, um, a, another tablet device so then we took this idea and I thought, okay, this is okay, but this is just a theme, um, you know, and and what does that offer the end user in terms of user interface? Because it's another Moodle theme. It's a nice theme and people adopt it, but it doesn't really take it to where I think Moodle needs to go. Um, and so hopefully this is uh, is where we need to go um, on Moodle. Um, one second, while I just pull up, I'll expect this full screen so you can. You can see where we're where we're heading here. Still got some of my drawings on from the uh, previous session, um, but that's okay. I'll change color. Uh, we'll change color to white here, and I'll just get a thicker pen. Okay. So again, we're looking at this this left hand column here, um, and we're looking at notifications. So we've got um, notifications coming in from this side here and the activity stream. But then this is something that we need to look at on the right hand side of the screen down here. So we need a way to quickly add things. So if we've got a message we need to send out to students, could we not click on here, which is messages, type a message in this window and hit send. Um, and that'll send a message to all the students on our cohort or on our course or in a group. Uh, again, so it's a nice, quick, easy way to get a message out there. And same with the resource here. Could we not click add a resource and then a drop down um, 
up here, asks us which course that PowerPoint's going on, and then it clicks it and sends it in one go. Uh, and same with reminders and calendar entries. Just could we do it from some Ajax um, type system here? And then down in this section, we have what I call feeds. Um, and this is like an activity wall. Uh, basically, it's like your, your Facebook wall. And a lot of um, students tell me, um, it, you know, they call into the office and see, say, make Moodle more like Facebook. Moodle's good, but make it more like Facebook, and it would be cool. Um, so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to be cool. Um, gets harder the older you get, um, keeping up with the kids, but it is, you know, we do need to listen to them because they are the, the voice really and they do drive what I do on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. So looking at assignments here, if a student's submitted an assignment, then the teacher could get a notification of this in this block and say, oh, you've got an assignment that needs marking. And likewise, if you're in a student view and your tutor's posted an assignment, it'll say, this assignment's just been posted up by your tutor. Um, can we, uh, you know, crack on with it basically? And if you've got any questions, then then ask them. Uh, and then down here at this section, we've got your courses and resources. So instead of actually looking at Moodle as courses, which we currently do, and and students can be enrolled in so many courses and sub courses, it's hard it's hard to 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 keep track of everything. And we've got the Moodle notifications block, which you can add, and lots of things that try and address this. But could we actually not have some sort of live um, feed in a wall where my resource and activities are coming in here so it tells me that my tutor's added this resource. Um, if I want it, I can look at it. If I want to ignore it, I can ignore it. But we can also then look at possibly adding it to favourites so the students are actually building up their own course. And this is this is the exciting collaborative bit. Um, if that PDF that my tutor's uploaded is, is essential to my studies, I can add that to my favourites and it goes in my resource bank. Um, I can also leave a comment and share on it. So the more resources I'm getting fed, the more I build up, and I build up my own personal learning space. I could then share that and make that public so other students within my class could actually see where I've got, and they say, oh, I like that resource, click, and I've added it to my favorites, and so on and so forth. So we're giving, we're putting the actual, sh the, the power back in the students, really, to, to build their own courses. Um, and that's where I really want to go with it, is, is make an aggregator, a dashboard, uh, and move away from this, way of we use courses primarily to store repository data and, and files and things within folders and yes there is interaction going on and things but it, it's probably not the greatest way to do it um, and hopefully working on an iPad um, you want something more organic something more natural something that feels less moodly and and more like more like Facebook more like an app um, so that's where we're going on it is very metro um, it's starting, it'll, it'll start its life with a theme. Uh, the theme is the first thing I want to get right on this. Um, and so I fired up a GitHub for, for this. Um, and over this summer, I'll be um, punching away at this to try and get get the theme. Uh, message from Mayor about Metro. Metro's uh, Microsoft Windows 8 um, layout, basically. It's, it's, it's the way they, they think their user interface should look. It's all sort of blocks and live tiles and, and squared things like that. Um, and and it's minimalistic. It relies more on typeface and fonts rather than um, graphics and images. And, and, and it's for me personally, it's a better use of space um, on the screen. Um, it, it's going back. It, it's sort of going back almost when we, we all got obsessed with pictures and, and flash and moving things. We're actually going back to text and, and HTML5 and things lead, lean itself quite nicely to that. Um, so that's where that's where we're wanting to go. So it'll start with the theme, um, and then slowly, then these things could be um, done as blocks. Um, so rather than hard hacks, we could we could then let's get an activity block, an activity stream block created, and then we could drop that into the theme and a resource block, and and, and really start making it modular. So less hacks and more more modular blocks. Um, and then I, the idea was, I'm normally we're slightly going to run over time, but the idea then is to actually put this as like a skin over the top. So Moodle carries on as normal, so you're not going to change anything, break anything. Um, maybe the students or the st staff can toggle between those two, those two options. Um, so they could toggle between their aggregating dashboard and, and back to basic Moodle. Um, and then in the future, then it might replace it. And, and the reason I go back to Metro again is Microsoft have done that with Windows 8. They've got this Metro interface. Um, but then you can also toggle back to the desktop that you're familiar with, you know, with your icons and the things like that. But there is no start menu anymore because your start menu is the Metro interface and the My Moodle page or Moodle is the Metro interface and this, therefore, is your, your landing screen. So I'm going to stop um, sharing now. I'm going to stop talking as well because um, I do too much talking. Um, I'll just put... Uh,
go back to this screen here and that's pretty much the the end of my presentation there um hope we're finished on time so i'm going to open it up for questions now if anybody wants a question uh then do fire it fire it at me um just enhance this so uh any questions i'll try and go back and read what i can on here um i've realized i've just talked your head off for a solid hour uh, apologies for that. i did want to do more interaction but then i get too carried away um am i sharing the code for my hacks uh yes is is the answer um the the um the center blocks um thing is just it's it's in the theme um so it's dead easy to do it's dead easy to to convert an existing theme to have center blocks we just change the layouts and we can have center blocks uh the course header block is a proper block that's installable um i can release that i'm going to get that released this week or next week um and the quick course edit that's a block again you can have that feel free to have that um the my moodle page the bit that everybody is wanting um i wish that was a block um but it's not it's a series of of evil nasty code hacks and and bodges and and tweaks from from a few years work where i've literally just started throwing things at um at the code so i really need to sit down and, and work out a proper plan to do that um and then yeah i've been told to work a bit more closely with martin and hq to 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 get some of these ideas into course so that's definitely going to be the plan uh the problem i have um is I, i'm responsible for quite a lot at the college and it's such a big organization that i often get um swamped down with reporting and and training and meetings and strategic things moving forward that i don't get to code as much um and obviously in the past couple of years we my wife and i have two two children now and and that means i don't get on the computer as much as i'd like to um unfortunately i used to do a lot more code and development and be able to stay up later and and, and geek out a lot more than i do but it, it's less geek now and more um more play kitchens and and dolls unfortunately I just been asked if I use uh, Yahoo's user interface or jQuery. Um I'm a jQuery fan. I'm a jQuery fan for the simple reason I think it's more visual. I like I like the end result. Um you can do some fantastic stuff with the Yahoo thing and and, and they're both on a par in terms of of what they're doing and probably someone with an even more technical background than me would, would probably tell me you know Yahoo's you know the way to go the the library for, um the UA. But for me jQuery all the way. Um I just love the way it looks and feels. um someone just asked me what the the long term plans for moodle the long term plan for moodle for me is um is looking really at at changing the way we use moodle um and aggregating all these other things that, and, and moodle 2 has made huge steps towards that i mean in terms of file repositories bringing in google docs and flickr and things like that that's the way i think moodle's going and the way that i'll be pushing it um at least is basically if we've got all these repositories if we've got dropbox and things like that and we've got skype and we've got twitter and everything let's use them let's find a way to bring that into moodle so moodle itself grows as a platform by using all these web2 technologies that are already out there and we need to embrace those and if the staff member wants to use dropbox to sh to to put their documents on then so be it we'll, we'll let's have a resource where they can add a dropbox folder and when they plop something in there it appears on on the course um I don't think we need to tie everything into Moodle as much as we do do. Um I think we need to just move it out a little bit and and see what else is going in there. Uh quickly jumping in here and by no means am I closing up this session but just before people start disappearing. Yeah. Uh look, I'd like to first of all say a big thank you uh to Lewis for his presentation. I I think everybody here is hopefully as blown away as I was. And this is the second time I've I've seen his work. What I've actually done is just enabled webcams for everybody. So if everybody wants to turn on their webcam and show their appreciation, um I'm sure that it, uh, that the uh, Lewis would uh hate and like it. Um there's also one more thing I need to do. Uh this was asked a couple of times in the <coughs> chat while you were doing a presentation. Uh there's a certain piece of music that people thought you need to hear uh that really expressed what they wanted from you. I want it all. not know exactly what you have unleashed with your presentation uh the interest that people have for what you have done um is just fantastic and for those of you who weren't here for the last session uh yeah Martin did actually say you know this is some fantastic stuff so while well, obviously things are never promised or anything uh, at this point uh there's certainly interest that you know hopefully we'll start seeing some of the ideas 
uh, from here moving you know, more into middle coys and move forward. So uh, please keep those questions coming. I know many of you have lots of questions. Uh, just my role is just to do the official wrap up, uh, a thank you. Uh, I should also mention that Lewis did this very last minute. I had a hole in the program and contacted him and said, would you mind presenting? So also uh, for doing this last minute, yeah, a big thanks from us and uh, enjoy the rest of iMoot. And please, that's not the end. Keep these questions coming. Um, I'm sure you have more and uh, we'll see you guys in the next session. Thanks, Julian. Thank you. Um, Timescales for public release. Um, yikes. Uh, for the My Moodle page, um, or the future stuff going forward. Um, well, the blocks I've currently got, you know, they're, they're a, a five minute job just to just to quickly check things, um, check things are all right, check things are going to work and then release them. Uh, one of the one of the dangers that that I have um, about obviously releasing things is is you've got to give some certain amount of support back to the community. So if people install your block and it breaks something or, or doesn't do something, then um, I've got to find that time to to do it. And, and it sounds a bit of an excuse, but I have less time these days, um, particularly with, with family and whatnot, that I, I don't have the, the, the actual time to support things as much as I'd like. Um, so I'm going to sort of, obviously those bots didn't go out fine, but the My Moodle stuff, I'm going to have to work a lot closer with, with other developers on that, I think, and, uh, and, and obviously Moodle HQ, and, and, and really try and, and crack on with things. Um, in my uh, previous role at the college, before we became such a, a huge college, I think we now might be the, the second largest college in the UK now, um, it, everything's changed uh, in terms of, of, of what we do. So, whereas I used to be able to lock myself in a room and and, and code away and, and, and hack away the, the keyboard. There's less and less of that now. So it's just juggling things around and, and finding finding the time. Um, but I will have a theme ready for summer. Um, our offers to help, which is which is fantastic. Um, yeah, I've, I've, that is definitely what, what we're going to need uh, moving forward. Um, and then get code into GitHub. Yep, definitely. Yes, it would. I mean, that's that is part of the plan. I think I think the plan moving forward is for me to um, actually go in now and, and look at how ugly the, the the code actually is now and just just check things out. I mean, we we might still have some old one nine calls in there um, and all sorts of, of strange things going in there as well. Um, I mean, one of the one of the key things to the My Moodle page is hiding and showing courses, which requires a change to the actual database table and. I'll have to go back, and it's been a, obviously it's work in progress for a, for a while now. So I'm going to have to see what everything does myself, and and put some notes on it and things, and then get it into GitHub. Um, yeah, the nasty wake up call for the developer de debug. I'm I'm actually scared to go in and actually have a look and see what's see what's lurking under there. Um, I I can I can pitch the files now, and I know there's there's files and 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 strange includes and all sorts. But yeah, it, it needs cleaning up now, and it needs to be a Needs to be done as a as a as a proper tool. I, I don't know, Julian. I, I don't. I think the last comment I left in there was for myself to leave comments in my code, um, and I ignored that comment. And and, I, and I'm, I'm notoriously bad for for not even putting comments in code and just writing functions and things, and then not remembering what they were or, or what they were used for. And then I have colleagues saying, "What? How? What's that mean?" And but they're you know. I think we're all guilty of that, really. Um, the guys at the OU are probably just cringing now, um, thinking, how, how do you work like that? Because um, they have a much structured approach. Um, but like I was saying before, um, <laughs> um, the, the theme, I really want to get the theme out for, for September. Um, because even, I think the themes, the because I'm quite visual from where I originally come from, from that background, is uh, for me, it's I, I love the aesthetics more than I more than I like the actual the actual code, um, and, and so I want to get the theme right first uh, because that'll help with with moving it forward in in, in the direction that I want, um, and and obviously getting that theme and getting that 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 fix my moodle and maybe some um, activity streams and things like that. That's core for what I have to do for for September um, because that's what I want the student experience to be for the new term. I want it to be something different to what we're doing now and just to just keep it moving forward and keep it um, cutting edge really um, because that's 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 what brings on the bacon. That's that's where I get my money as obviously a, 
at the college so I have to always make sure that I'm, I'm moving things on with there as well so it's just gonna be juggling the projects um, juggling the code and the time and, and taking it from here but I'm, I'm overwhelmed by the, the feedback that I've, that I've had so far it, it does inspire to, to to keep to keep going um, and to keep doing things yeah definitely um, I, I definitely will need help so uh, I would, I'll take you all up on that offer. Okay, Richard, thank you.